if you're currently looking for a budget gaming mouse that has a good sensor, customizable size, and delivers good value for its price while performing reasonably well for gaming without needing you to sell a kidney, then I just might have a candidate for you today. Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Edward. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Marvel Fit Lite, which is the wired version of the Marvel Fit Pro that was a Kickstarter funded project. And even though Marvel sent over this review unit, like all my other videos, I'm free to share my actual usage feedback and experience without the sponsor's influence. And if you like what you see today, I'll leave a link to Marvel's website in the description. So hit that subscribe button if you're new here, and let's find out how well this gaming mouse holds up against other budget gaming mouse at the $40 price range. Opening the box, you'll find a plastic tray holding the Marvel Fit Lite and a second smaller grip cover. The color that was sent to me is the black version with transparent grey colored grip covers, but there's also a white version with clear covers available. Other than that, there's a pair of spare side buttons and an English language manual. Picking up the Marvel Fit Lite, I immediately noticed that the material used for the shell and grip covers was of good quality and in my opinion feels a lot better than most cheaper mainstream budget models from well-established brands. The 1.8 meters long USB-A cable is sleeved with a low friction fabric material similar to Razer Spleefex cables but slightly stiffer. The matte finish material shell feels very smooth and sturdy and it's not the average thin and cheap plastic you would find on many budget gaming mouse from smaller brands. Though because of the thicker shells, the weight of the mouse is slightly heavier than eSport grade mouse like the Viper Ultimate and the G Pro X Super Lite which you can check out the review up here. And since I've mentioned the G Pro X Super Lite, the shape of the Marvel Fit Lite feels immediately at home with my hands as the shape of the larger grip cover on is near identical to the G Pro X Super Lite, albeit a little heavier at 98 grams. This ambidextrous form is comfortable for extended gaming sessions, but it is not a true ambidextrous mouse as the side buttons are only tailored toward right-handed users. For those with smaller hands or have a fingertip or claw grip, the included smaller grip cover can be swapped onto the mouse for a better fit and a weight reduction of 11 grams, which I admit is a nice feature, but not entirely new as this was introduced by the Logitech G9X back in 2009. Also, I personally find that changing the covers on the Marvel Fit Lite do take some getting used to as I initially find it very difficult to remove the grip cover from the mouse. The left and right click buttons are both of equal length and there's very little wobble to it so that adds a level of premium feel to it. There's also a DPI cycle switch that by default cycles through 5 sensitivity levels should you choose not to install Marvel software. Underneath the mouse, you'll find PTFE feet which is something you don't expect on a $40 mouse and a button that cycles between 12 built-in RGB lighting effects. On the left side, there are two removable side buttons bringing the total number of buttons to 7 which are all customizable via Marvel software. And here's how they all sound like. As for the specifications of the Marvel Fit Lite, the mouse uses a PixArt 3327 sensor that is also found in the popular HyperX Pulsefire Pro gaming mouse. It offers up to 12,000 dpi sensitivity with a tracking speed of 220 inches per second at up to 1000 Hz polling rate, which you can set via the Marvel software. However, unlike the Fit Pro, there is no debounce delay and lift off distance customization here, so it defaults to 2mm lift off. The main switches are the Omron 20M switches which are rated for up to 20 million clicks but unfortunately are infamous for their double clicks. And of course, we have the customizable shell that is sold in pairs with 6 colors to choose from. Compared to the other mouse such as the Logitech G203 Lite Sync and HyperX Pulsefire Pro which also sits at the $40 price point, the features and specifications offered are pretty much on par with each other except for Marvel software which I think could be improved. So that brings me to the next section where I'll share my usage feedback. Other than the rather limited software, during the past one month I've spent with the Marvel Fit Lite, I really couldn't find any negatives regarding the basic mouse functions. Everything worked as they should for gaming and productivity work and it was extremely comfortable to use it for the whole day. The buttons all provide a satisfying crisp clicks 
with no noticeable latency for gaming, and the scroll wheel was on the quiet side with just the right amount of scrolling resistance. For Marvel software, you can set up to six sensitivity stages, adjust the polling rate and scroll speed, reprogram each mouse button, set RGB effects and colors, and record macros. Setting RGB colors and effect was pretty straightforward, but it's a pity that the software cannot program each individual lighting zones on the mouse. Given that the Marvel Fit Lite has such vibrant and diffuse RGBs built in, I think it is a missed opportunity to not make good use of the hardware. As for the macro recording, for some reason, I just can't get it to work. Now, for the key selling feature of the Marvel Fit Lite with its swappable covers, I have to admit that with my large hands, I don't really see the need of a secondary grip cover. I'm not sure about you, but I think that for a wired mouse, this feature is only useful until you find the size and colors that fits you and your setup, and you'll probably stick to that size for some time before wanting to change again. It would make more sense if this was a wireless mouse, and I could make it smaller to bring around. But I think what Marvel could do here is maybe offer additional grip cover shapes, such as one with a thumb rest for gamers with palm grips, to truly make this selling point feature stand out even more. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think in the comments. But overall, I think Marvel is heading in the right direction by giving gamers the ability to customize their mouse, but just not quite there yet. The Marvel Fit Lite delivers a good quality build in a comfortable form factor with all the basic functions of a gaming mouse, especially when compared to $40 mouses from well-established brands. As for the software, fortunately, it could be remedied with updates, so hopefully Marvel will improve their software and make the Fit Lite really shine. But in the meantime, I will only rec recommend this mouse for gamers looking for customization options to spice up or complement their setup, and it's not too serious about getting the best eSport grade performance from a gaming mouse. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and thank you Marvel for sending over this review unit. And as always, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button and share it with a friend as it will help this channel a lot more than you know it, and I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao!